Hi, I'm Rob from b and and I'm at the Sennheiser pop-up store on Prince Street in New York City. I'm talking with Brian from Sennheiser about a new VR mic, the Ambio VR mic from Sennheiser. Brian, thanks for joining us today. No problem, thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about, before we get into the specifics of the microphone, tell me a little bit about what this mic is for and a little bit about uh, VR sound sure. and 3D sound. Sure, yeah, so this microphone is meant to be a complement to 360 video cameras. Mm -hmm. So just as you're capturing a fully immersive experience visually, you wanna be able to capture a similar kind of experience for audio. So this allows you to capture fully spherical sound fields that allow a playback to be rendered uh, 3D for the users. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the microphone specifically. For starters, I can see that we were looking at four capsules here. Yeah, so the microphone is based upon the ambisonics principle. So it's a four-channel, first-order ambisonics microphone that allows you to capture fully spherical sound fields from a single point in space. Okay, and these are all cardioid capsules, so they're directional, giving us a sense of a 3D when they're all added together. Is that That's correct? correct? Yeah, so we, we recommend using a field recorder that has uh, four channels of digitally controllable gain mm -hmm. so that you can pr precisely set the preamps as well as suggesting that you get a field recorder that has the ability to link together preamps so that if you do need to make an adjustment on the fly you can just adjust one fader and it brings all of your levels up or down. And it's because it's critical that those preamps be at the same levels to get an accurate sound field with the microphone. Exactly yeah the ambisonics principle is based upon differences of what each capsule receives mm -hmm. so any external influence on that can, uh, can affect your sound field. This is a Rycote shock mount as well and tell me a bit about how users use the microphone in say a camera rig. Sure yeah so just as in a 360 video where the camera defines the perspective of the viewer the position of the microphone defines the perspective of the listener okay. so you want to place that as close to the camera as possible. Mm -hmm. We find most people are placing it underneath the camera either using a magic arm some kind of clip or a monopod uh, with the included Rycote shock mount. Okay so here in front of us we've got got a metal grill. This is for RF, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, it's recommended when you're using the mic to always have the grill on there to be fully shielded. And we also have a windscreen as well, and that comes with it also. Yeah, we have a basic foam windshield for kind of indoor applications or light breezes, but if you're really going to be using it outdoors, we recommend getting a Rycote BBG, the 25 millimeter version, as well as a wind jammer to go on top of it. So we've talked a little bit about the design and how the microphone works. Let's talk about the recording process. The microphone records into A format, but ultimately it has to be converted to B format. Tell me about that process and the software and how that works. Sure, yeah. So once you capture the audio on your field recorder, you'll have A format ambisonics. Mm -hmm. You bring that into either your DAW or your video workstation, and using the plugin that we provide, uh, convert that to B format. Okay. So the plugin we provide is both VST and AAX. It supports Pro Tools as well as pretty much every other digital audio workstation. Mm -hmm. Now, once you're in B format, what most people are going to do is they're going to bring it into an ambisonics post-production workflow. And what, okay. this, what these workflows allow you to do is add additional sound sources, whether that be spot mics captured on set or sound effects, and then preview that by Neurally. Okay, and in terms of using um, in terms of using ambisonics in a post-production workflow, there's a couple of different uh, software applications that allow me to do that. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. There are a couple ones that range from free all the way up to kind of more expensive and more feature-filled. The free one that most people are using at the moment is Facebook 360 Spatial Workstation. Okay. Yeah. So once I've got it in B format, then I can upload it to both Facebook and YouTube as well? That's correct. Both Facebook and YouTube support uh, Ambisonics B format inputs. All right. So Brian, you've told me a little bit about how the mic works and the workflows. You guys have also created this mic with the help of actual content creators. Is that correct? Yeah. So throughout the development process of this microphone, we've worked closely with content creators throughout the world uh, to make sure that the mic is exactly what they need. So from the very early stages of prototypes, we put these in the hands of creators so they can put it through the rigors and stresses of real world production. And these content creators are everything from small VR houses, audio production houses, up to big networks. That sounds great. Let's talk to one of these content creators, Mr. Wilson Brown. So to get a take on how the Ambio VR microphone actually functions in the field, I'm talking with Wilson Brown of Ant Food. Wilson, thanks for coming in today. Tell me about your experience with the Ambio VR mic. Well, thanks for having me. So I work at Ant Food. We mm -hmm. define ourselves as a creative audio studio, and we make music and sound design for media and experiences. Recently, we've been doing a lot of VR work, and I am very grateful for Sennheiser, including us on their creators program. So we've been working for, with this for about nine months. Okay. This mic has been incredibly effective either recording live shoots, ambience and whatever dialogue or 
action, whatever's happening. Mm -hmm. um, we've also done a number of musical projects where we're using it basically as a room mic to create um, an ambiance and then decoding that. For, okay. Uh, and are you also often using it with spot microphones as well in your productions? Yeah, so um, our production workflow is uh, very diverse and I would say changes project to project. Um, we're always using a combination of microphones. We'll use one or two of these um, for general ambiance and, and room. We will always mic close um, either people that are talking or singing, um, sound design elements that are, you know, coming from a specific point mm -hmm. in the space, um, and obviously instruments if we're recording a, uh, you know, a musical ensemble. And then in addition, I mean, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff in post too. So our, our arsenal of tools, this is a really important and natural aspect of it um, that help, that can help sort of blur uh, the distinction when we're artificially placing these mono sources in a three-dimensional three space. And so with the Ambio VR mic, that allows the sound to actually respond to head tracking from the viewer's perspective as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so you would record your space with this first order ambisonics. You'd encode that from A to B format. And then from there, there are a variety of options where you can uh, either mix or, or render that into something that will respond to your gaze. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fantastic for, for creating a three-dimensional space that responds to your head position. Wilson, I really appreciate you coming in and telling us about your experiences with the Ambio VR. Mike, thank you. Sure, thank you. All right, so from the Sennheiser pop-up store in New York City, I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching.